Hi, you guys. Welcome back to the podcast. I want to do a quick disclaimer. Um, This is just me kind of sharing the stuff that I'm learning as I'm going along. Um, This is not for everybody. It's just kind of the things I'm realizing from day to day of what I need to learn. I may come back later and be like, okay, I was way off on this, but this is just kind of the stuff that I feel like I needed to learn as each week goes by. Um, And if you want a quick fix as far as like losing weight, like you have a month to lose X amount of pounds or whatever, I definitely recommend doing OMAD. I did that for my wedding. I think I lost like 15 to 20 pounds and I would just eat whatever I wanted just once a day. And maybe I, I, I think I was a little more motivated. So My meals are probably smaller, but I lost like 15, 20 pounds in three weeks. So if you want a quick fix, that worked for me because I was in a pinch. But this podcast is really more for like if you're fed up of like trying to lose the weight and then getting it all back and you kind of want to just finally do like a set it and forget it. Because I feel like once we figure this out, once I like really get it, then the weight loss getting in shape is really kind of easy it's really kind of fun because every time i've lost weight in the past once i started doing it it was it wasn't like i was like oh man i've got to stop eating this or i wish i wasn't eating this it was just like oh this sounds good this is what i want to eat or like oh i can't wait to get to the gym or this is what i'm going to work out on next next week or whatever like it was not hard i think it's just because Usually there's some sort of external force that forces me to kind of like start focusing on myself and really like designing my life and just honed in on myself and how I want my life to be. And it's been hard this past year because I'm happy. I'm, you know, life is good. And so it's really hard because there's no external force just kind of like forcing me to like really focus in on myself. I think the last one was, you know, I had just moved, started a new job. So it was just all honed in. Um, The first time I really lost weight, it was, I had just gotten so like deep down in not a good place that it was like, okay, I've like, I've got to do something. And that's where that motivation comes from. But it's really hard when you're happy, when things are like not so bad to really like force ourselves to get there. Um, so this is for those of you who just want to go on the ride with me and like figure out how to do this manly manually when like life is pretty good and there's no like, you know, doctor's visit that makes us have to lose weight and we're just trying to do this manually. Um, so this is me just kind of week to week, what I'm figuring out, what I'm learning. Um, right now I'm kind of stuck. I'm stuck at 191. My weight hasn't really budged. And I think what I need to do is I need to pick one thing to indulge on. Right now, my meals are like burger and fries. And instead, I think I need to somehow I need to narrow it down. And I'm having a hard time saying, okay, I'm going to eat a low carb meal because every day I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'll eat the low carb meal. Tomorrow I'll eat the low carb meal. So I, but it's not working for me. I've got to change something. So now what I'm going to try is I'm going to pick one thing in my meal because I'm still doing OMAD, one meal a day fasting, which I'm loving. Um, So I'm just going to pick one thing in my meal that will be my indulging thing that that satisfies me. Because when I was in shape before, I still was eating things that I looked forward to, still eating stuff that I liked. So I'm just going to like now instead of um, hamburger and fries, I'll get my big juicy bacon cheeseburger and a side salad. And I am going to try and like make sure I I feel like this sounds so bad, but I'm going to try and make sure like I hone in on the cheeseburger, like not thinking about, oh, I'm missing out on some delicious fries. I'm going to hone in on thinking about, oh, this burger is going to be so good and it's going to be so juicy and all the bacon and all the cheese and seeing what I'm getting, like really looking at what I'm getting instead of what I'm taking away. And I think mentally that may help me say no. And in my mind, it's like, okay, I'm not really saying no. I'm saying yes to the cheeseburger. So I'm still indulging. I'm still getting satisfied. I still am eating what I want to eat and not feeling like I'm depriving myself. I'm just honing in on the hamburger. So we're going to try that this coming week, see how that works. Um, And before when I was in shape, I 
was really good at planning out my meals ahead of time, not like a week in advance, but I think for the most part, I knew the day before what I was gonna eat. So from now on, I'm gonna try doing that because right now I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna do a little more low carb. Okay, tomorrow I'm gonna do a little more carb. And it's, I forgot that it's hard to do that when you're hungry or where you're, when you're already deciding what you're gonna eat. And then it's like, oh no, I, I definitely want some fries. And so now I'm gonna be like, okay, tomorrow, what sounds good? And already kind of have out in my head, okay, this is what I'm going to eat, the hamburger and the um, the hamburger and the side salad or whatever. That way, my mind's already set. It's not like I'm depriving myself. And hopefully that'll be a good little trick for me. Um, as far as my OMAD diet is going, I'm still doing the one meal a day. My digestion is so good. Um, I, I feel like my body just operates better as I'm fasting, doing the one meal a day. I don't feel deprived. I still look forward to my one meal, my digestion, my bloating, all of that is gone. And I actually feel like my metabolism is going up, you guys, because normally, like the past year in the evenings when I want to eat something, it's like an appetite thing. It's like a boredom thing. It's like, ooh, this sounds so good. And th just this past week, I've been like, I'm hungry, like hungry, hungry. So I've been, that's probably why my weight hasn't changed that much because I've had a second meal pretty often. Um, so that's good. I feel like my metabolism is going up, but I think I need to just kind of set in my head that, okay, we're just going to have this one thing that I'm indulging on a day. And if I have to have a second meal, it's like already planned out, it's going to be low carb. So I really feel this shift, like things are about to start changing finally. And what I think is really Force the shift in me is that I am finally coming to this focus on myself from a pure place in the past like year I've been like I'm gonna focus on myself and I've been really trying but I think the difference is is I've been trying to come at it with my mind with my brain like thinking through my head okay, I'm going to focus on myself, focus on myself. And a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about is from, I kind of get like this inspiration from the book Conversations with God. I absolutely love it. Um, there's so many things in there. Like I, every time I listen to it, every time I read it, it's just something new that applies to a different way in my life. And in the book there, he's talking about, you know, the path to God is not through your mind, through your heart. And it dawned on me that, this past year, that's what I've been trying to do. Like I know every time I've lost weight, it was focused on myself and that's what I've been trying to do. But it was, I was going through my mind, not through my heart. And when I go through my heart, it comes from a very pure place. And that's why I feel like maybe this is different. Like I feel a different shift. I feel a genuine focus on myself and my life and where I'm going because I think it's a balance of both your mind and your heart. I think the heart is the first part because that's where it's strongest. That's where our energy is the strongest. That's where we're more, we're the most powerful and it has to be a balance because then the mind can say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to eat that. But I think that's where my shift has come from is I'm finally coming from a good place, like not a good place, but like a pure place. And that's why it's been so hard the past year because life has been relatively good. So it's like, you know, you don't have that oomph. Like I remember praying to God when the first time I lost weight and I got up to 192, which is I'm at 191 and being so, you know, down and out and really praying and coming from such a pure place. And that's, that was my starting point. And now I, I feel like I have like light bulb, like Eureka, like okay, this is, this is why this feels different because I'm finally coming from a pure place. It's like a letting go feeling. It's not trying to control or say, okay, it's going to happen by this amount of time, or it's just that like pure of heart, letting go, giving it to God and just kind of, I don't know how it's going to happen, but this is pure and this is what I'm going to focus on. And listening to this book also helps me with just like thinking about my life and where I want my life to go. And so I think this is just such a different way of coming about it. And I think this is 
the key because I know that it's about focusing on herself and it, going back to a breakup. That's, that's just the best example to me because if you've ever gone through a breakup and then you lost a bunch of weight and then everyone's like, Oh, how'd you lose weight? And you're like, Oh, I just started, you know, just started eating low carb and just smaller portions. And it's like, you know, the rest of us are over here like, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. And that's what it is. It's because I think when we go through a breakup, it's such a heart thing. Like it comes from such a emotional place, genuine in our heart that we have to have a shift and we say, okay, I'm going to focus on myself. And, and you kind of like let that breakup go and start focusing on yourself from a raw place and, that's where it's at. It's coming from a raw place. So I just feel like so strongly and so glad that I'm finally figuring this out because for the past year, it's just been, I know I got to focus on myself, but how, why am I not like, what's different? Cause something has felt like, okay, this is not the same. So, but now it's like, I have to keep it up because, you know, I know in the past going through a breakup and then losing the weight and then life kind of gets good again. And then the focus on myself starts to fade away. That's what happened last time. Life was good. I was enjoying things and slowly, but surely I stopped focusing on myself. And I think that I have to remind myself every time I feel that, because it's like we have this little voice where we know when something's off, we know when we're starting to let go of that piece of ourselves, we're starting to shift away from the focus on ourselves. And I have to like, listen to that because I feel like that voice is like so small, so faint that it's easy to kind of like let it brush past you. And I felt that this past, this past year, I felt it and I knew it. And I kind of was like, no, 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 I'll get back to it. I'll, you know, and I have to remember the focus on ourself is the most important thing. I think the problem is, is that it's so easy once you, once I start like focusing on myself and life is so good, it's so easy to kind of place so much value on external sources of feeling good. It's so easy to kind of go there and see like outside people as our source of love and happiness because all these people start making you feel good because you're putting goodness out in the world because you're focused on yourself And it's easy to kind of shift and forget that when we focus on ourselves, we're getting our direct line from ourselves, that, that source, that direct line of happiness is from ourselves. And I think that's one of the things about magnetic people. If you ever meet someone who's just like, you're, you feel so drawn to them, like, like, wow, like you can tell they're very like internal, they're not externally driven. And I really believe that those people are their own source, their own resource of happiness and joy. They use their own direct line instead of looking for everybody else to get the direct line. And that's how I feel about this weight loss journey, because it's, you know, it's not for the, the Facebook likes or the you know, Hey, wow. What'd you do? You look so great. Like, of course it makes us feel good. We're human, but it's like remembering that, you know, like not letting that take precedent because it's so easy to place our source of happiness on that praise on the, on the compliments, things like that, because it does feel good. And it, it's like concrete, but you know, we have to remember, I have to remember that all of that source, all of that joy and feeling good is coming from that direct line. And, and if you've ever noticed like somebody being, you can tell, you can tell the difference in someone who just like feeds off that direct line and someone who is like very like feed me, feed me. Like I don't, I don't get that happiness from my own source. So feed me, tell me more like asking basically asking for compliments. What do you think of this? What do you think about me using all of these external things as the source where our source is within us? And that's why it's just like full circle that to come to focusing on yourself from your heart, that's the source, right? So I know this is so like, you know, deep, but 
I believe it in my heart of hearts. Like it just, it feels so good. It feels so right. It's like, you know, it feels good to be on the path of learning and growing and remembering that all of the source comes from right here, our heart. And I believe from God and it's just important to me. And I think this is a big part of my journey. I feel like I want to keep this going and as I lose weight, remembering that this is the source. Another thing that I've had to struggle with a little bit is remembering that putting myself first is the biggest act of love because when I put others first, I have to look at it as they, I'm putting a load on them. I'm adding a debt to them without actually knowing it because by giving of myself, then mentally, whether I realize it or not, you know, I think as human beings, we kind of take tally, like we're adding a debt to them that they never asked for. And then when we put ourselves first, we are just better people in the world. Or I know, I feel like when I put myself first and I build myself up, like as I go out into the world, I have better tools. Like I am a better I'm a better tool. <laughs> I'm, I have so much more to give when I do choose to go out into the world and, you know, I have filled myself up. To be honest with you guys, like, I think it's been a catch-22 because I haven't put all of this focus on myself and built myself up. Even though I've been trying to, it's made me, like, shy away from going out into the world more so than in the past. And I think it's just like a catch 22, like the worse we feel, the less we want to go out into the world. And then the more we like just choose to stay at home and watch TV, the easier it is for us to eat and then gain weight because there, I mean, to be honest, there are things that like I shy away from and I kind of am like, I would rather kind of sit at home and chill and I've watched a lot more TV over the past year than I used to and it's just another sign that okay I've got to put myself first and then you know I feel better about going out into the world and not not hiding I hate to use the word hiding but it's definitely a difference from before because you know I get embarrassed of not having clothes that fit me well, not having clothes that I like. I enjoy like being able to put on clothes that I like. I'm, you know what? I'm tired of trying to find an outfit and doing like the head tilt, like convincing myself, okay, that doesn't look bad. I am ready to go out and like, oh, I love this outfit. Oh, this, like, oh, I'm going to wear this. And then, oh, I can wear it with these boots and blah, blah. Like I miss that. I, I love picking out outfits and and feeling like I put a cute outfit together and I mean it's just I guess part of being a girl like I I enjoy that and I'm ready for that I'm tired of like trying on 10 different shirts to find the one that just looks the least worse I hate to admit that out into the world but but you know it's like I hate I'm out I know I always get in the mirror and I'm like okay that one's not so bad like I'm ready to go out and wear cute clothes and, and feel like myself and all of that. Like, you know, it's when I was in the gym yesterday, it dawned on me, like, what have I been doing? This is my experience in the world, my life. Every second is my own experience and I choose what I want it to be. And so I want to choose experiences where when I go out into the world, it's about connection. It's about building bonds and doing good things. And I feel like my weight has blocked some of that, not blocked it, but it takes away from it because I'm worried about, you know, oh, pulling my shirt out or, you know, all of the little things that come with weight, you know, am I, I, I can't wait to be small again and feel light and feminine and have that smallness about me. You know, you just kind of carry yourself a little differently when you're small and petite and I still want to be strong. I want that balance between being 
petite and strong, not like feeling, <laughs> this is for my friend Carrie, not feeling so large and in charge. <laughs> like that's how I feel. And I, I, I can't wait to have that softness about me being smaller and petite and feeling more feminine. Um, yeah, like, and that's another big thing that I'm, I'm learning from this book. Um, conversations with God is so good. Um, is, you know, he, they were talking about how a lot of us kind of, we wonder why we keep seeing the same things that we don't want, but it's because we're focusing on these things that we don't want. Like, oh, I don't want to worry about my weight. I don't want to worry about my clothes. But instead, how to fix that is by focusing on what we do want. It's decide who you want to be, what you want to do, and what you want to have. So it's focusing on what you want instead of what you don't want. And I'm working on that. Like, So I'm dreaming about being soft and small and petite and how I'm going to carry myself differently and, you know, trying to do that more now. So it's happening now, thinking about all of these things that I do want, that I want to be, that I want to do, that I want to have. And it feels good to have this shift, but in the future, I have to remember to continue this. So anyways, sorry to get so deep on you guys this week. I just am having feeling like I'm having some good shifts and I wanted to share it with you guys um because I'm ready to just set it and forget it I'm ready to get the weight off feel good and and move on to to important things in my life not that this isn't important but this is just like you know one tree in the forest that I'm, that I've been working on for how long like there's so much other things to do in life. Life is short and I want to get this one done, keep it up, but move on to my next goals, my next barriers, my next thing I want to learn. Um, right now it's learning how to get fit and stay fit. So I'm ready to move on, figure this out and we're going to move on. So anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments or at the end of the podcast. Um, and I'll try and do a podcast where I answer everyone's questions. I hope you guys are having an amazing week and I'll talk to you guys later. Mwah. Thank you.